guys, she is up in the air, up in the air, and welcome back to JW Classic VW, and I'm Jason. That's Goose, my 1956 Oval Ramp, and we are doing some upgrades to the front stabilizer bar on my 4-inch narrowed beam, and uh, yeah, some of you guys have asked about that 4-inch narrowed uh, beam, and also the stabilizer bar. Where did I get that thing from? Well, we'll talk about that a little bit in the video, but uh, what are we doing today? Let me turn around the bench and show you the CSP upgrade kit. All right, guys, here it is, CSP upgrade kit. They actually have their own bushings, too, that come with this or it would not come with it, but uh, you can get with it if you order it through CSP. I did not see that on the CIP1 website. That's where I got this from. This is the CIP part number if you guys are looking for it. But uh, you can just look for front stabilizer bar uh, and you'll be able to find it there. Well, we're going to get to work on this just in a second after this intro. guys all right guys welcome back let me crank this fan down Whew. first thing is first it is definitely hot down here i went upstairs and uh, got myself some refreshments <laughs> i turn my little swamp cooler around here too because yeah it's just about unbearable so i got a little carried away and uh, went ahead and tried to install these at first with uh, out any kind of directions and or guidance. And thank God for buddies out there because Kevin, Kevin from Australia, hit me up with a photo showing these things installed a different way. And uh, it would have saved me some time to read those directions. Let me show you what I did. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Up underneath Goose. So. I liked the way this looked because, you know, cosmetically speaking, it's more appealing the way that these brackets sit on here like this. But when you do that, the shock hits the tower and I'll bring it around the back side and show you what I mean with that. Right here, right here where the shock comes on, it like runs right into the back side of this, the larger of the two brackets. And uh, well, that's just not gonna work. So I went ahead and looked at the directions Thanks, Kevin, for helping me out. Look at the directions, and this flips around the other way. So, yeah, I've got to fix that. But let's first talk about this stabilizer bar and uh, how it's a little different than maybe one you might see out there. Uh, yeah. So this uh, beam, my front beam, started life off as a 2-inch narrowed beam that you could pick up off of pretty much uh, any of the uh, websites. It's just a standard, like, empty 2-inch narrowed beam. And, uh, yeah, I went ahead and got these bad brakes from Pete over there at Air Cooled. These brakes are really awesome. They work fabulous. They've been upgraded a couple times. Actually, they got a four-piston caliber on them now, and they used to have a two-piston caliber. But, uh, yeah, back to the stabilizer work. So what I ended up doing is this, this was a two-inch narrowed beam, and at the ends, I just went ahead and cut off cut off a little bit because it was running into things when I tried to put it back on there. And you have to use a little bit of oofa, a little bit of oofa sizer, a little bit of mechanical engineering to get this top portion into place. But uh, yeah, I was able to bend this up in and I'll show you guys on the other side how that works out. But I was able to bend this up and get the OG clamps on here. But I like this upgrade. It's a lot stronger. The, when I show you the other ones, you'll see what I mean when I go back to the bench here in a second. But when we have her down on the ground here, it's a great opportunity to inspect all of your hardware. And I've, I know, guys, you've pointed this out before, too. These little tabs here, I got I got to bend those up, Jay. You got to bend those up. After you torque down the beam, these four main bolts here. There's one. Uh, one, two, three, four. There's four main bolts here that hold the beam in place. You want to... Go ahead and check that out. I'm gonna check everything for tightness. I can see that my gearbox has been leaking a little bit, which, eh, that's all part of life. A little bit of leaking going on there, but I'm gonna check out all of the hardware. I'm gonna run through everything when it comes to suspension wise. Just kind of going around with a, with a wrench, 15 mil, and my uh, 19 mil are the main two. And just checking everything, make sure it's tight because things can loosen up. And the last thing you want to do is have something come off when you're going down the freeway at freeway speeds. That's a bad deal. So first things guys, let me bring it up to the bench and I'll show you the difference between the two brackets and why I'm upgrading to the CSP kit. 
and then I'm gonna flip these suckers back over and then I'll bring you on to the passenger side and we can get that one done together. It's almost time for that uh, first cerveza. It's uh, getting a little warm, a little bit of toasty <laughs> down here. Hey guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this content if you're enjoying it, which I know you are. I almost got 9,000 subscribers. On our way to 10,000 subscribers and that will be super neat. So now back to the video. All right, all right. Yeah, so I, like I told you, I got carried away with trying to get this to work the way I wanted it to look. I wanted it to go the other way because it looked better. And I came up with these brackets and I was gonna relocate the shock, but then I was like, never mind, never mind. Let me put you guys in the tripod and I'll kind of display the difference between these two units. All right, looky, looky, looky. So first off, these ones are made out of a lot better stamped steel than whatever the heck these are made out of. It's just super flimsy. And with that, the flex, the whole point of a stabilizer bar is when you're going through turns is whenever you happen to hit it pretty hard, it keeps one wheel planted, at least one wheel planted. If the other wheel starts to come off the ground, you know, it applies that opposite force to the stabilizer bar to the other side of the suspension. So this is not gonna be as great at doing that as per se these right here. And they come with stainless hardware, which is really cool, but don't forget to put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads, on the threads of this hardware because Stainless with stainless, because this has a, a nylock on there. Stainless with stainless has the tendency to start to gall, and uh, that is no good. So put a little bit of anti-seize on these, and you're going to, uh, you know, be a lot happier about that. Yeah. We are one beer down. Uh, we broke out the Osvo for a little bit of rust rehabilitation. <laughs> uh, right here where uh, I had to knock those tabs up. I went ahead and hit some Osvo up on there. And uh, all that rust is gone. I gotta do the other side still. Haven't done that one yet, but uh, it's coming soon. I'm about to jump to the other side, show you guys what's going on with this upgrade. Okay, I swapped it around. No problemo, but you do see, like I told you guys, with this stainless, even with a little bit of anti seize, I still had one of those nuts got snapped off whenever I had to swap it around. But it is super tight in place, and I'm kind of curious. Uh, if I'm gonna feel any kind of difference in my turns now because man, that thing is way locked down. I like it, I like it a lot. Let's move to the other side and get to work on installing that side, yeah. See, <laughs> snap that sucker right off. We are on the other side and because folks are normally super curious about all the action going on underneath here with the fuel system, I'll go ahead and just kind of explain what we got going on here. I got a supersized air motive 10 micron actually it's a hundred mic no 10 micron 10 micron fuel filter and if you look at the tank I don't know if you guys can see that very good but it's a 8 an that drops into that bad boy yep 8 an line that goes into the top and then it feeds out with a 6 an actually I think it's 8 all the way to the back yeah 8 all the way to the back of the pump 8 an all the way back to the pump this is a Bosch 044 fuel pump more than enough uh, flow capacity for this uh, beast of a motor. And both of my lines, I've got the feed and the return that comes back. And you saw on the bottom of the tank as well that there are two lines going in the bottom of that bad boy. Ooh, that is super dark in there. Let's see if I can get a little light on the subject. There you go. Yeah, two lines. The uh, return is on the left and the feed with the 8AN is on the right. Good stuff. Now it's time to get to work, guys. Let's get to work. We gotta remove these uh, these old ones first, and then we'll show you what we're gonna do to get the new ones on. So I'm gonna take off the small one first, put the new one on, and uh, don't forget to put a little bit of grease on here. Not a lot, just a little bit of grease on the bushings to help keep the squeaky squeaks down, yeah. This is gonna go pretty quick, and then I'm gonna go through after this, after putting the new uh, CSP, CSP uh, brackets in, I'm gonna go through and Check all the torques. Just, I'm just checking to make sure everything's kind of tight still. I don't like the idea of anything getting loose. And uh, whenever you got a chance on the front end to take a look at everything, you should do an inspection. Are we going the right way? Yeah, we are. Good. Ooh, easy peasy. Super quick. You just see how flimsy these are. I actually took some, <laughs> some tin and wrapped it around here to help make up any kind of little difference in there because it just wasn't getting tight enough for my my likes, all right? 
Now I get my little grease thing out and grease this bushing up a little bit, and then we'll put the uh, smaller one on here. We should be good to go. So you probably could use some anti-seize there. I don't see how that would uh, hurt anything if you just have some anti-seize and no grease laying around. I guess I could get the job done too. I just, I happen to have grease nearby, so not a big deal. Yeah, grease and uh, urethane or just regular rubber bushings will save your ears, if you guys didn't know. It's always a good practice to practice any kind of bushings that you put on. You're going to need a big old wrench, a robo grip or something like that. Comes in handy at this moment. I got these big old vice grips. These suckers are lifesavers, man. This makes your life easier. Little bits of the anti seas. I'm using a Q-tip because I can just throw that away when I get done. Instead of using like a brush or something. I do like the brushes too. But the Q-tip idea makes it a lot cleaner. Let's see how much of a booger it's going to be. Oh, not that bad at all. Not that bad at all. Of course, it slid some. That's all right. I'm pretty sure we could slide it back up on there. See how good you are with a single hand. <laughs> Why mechanics are so popular. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Couldn't help myself. Ooh, there she goes. Yeah. It's funny how much easier things are when you follow the directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these uh, are a H6 on the size for the uh, Allen key up top there, if you guys are curious. And it's 13 millimeter. I sure hope you got one of those around. And these self bottom out, so you just keep going until you can't go no more. Bueno. This is where you get to learn a trick. If you haven't seen this trick before, this will be a new one for your book. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I had to take the shock off on the other side. Well, I don't know if I had to or not, but. Uh, we're going to try it with a shock in place on this side. Woo! Almost got me. Almost got me. <laughs> Something comes flying your way. Grease it up. A little bit of lube. It's actually staying up pretty tight. I think the uh, other side might be sucking this side up in nice and tight too. Or maybe even right here. But uh, it's cool. Very cool. So the trick is the little trick that I told you or told you about. That I take this white script, this big line script. Let me see if you guys can see. I'm gonna have to back you out a little bit. All right, a bit of a different angle. Let's see if you guys can get from the top view on this one. It's one of the hardest parts about doing YouTube is getting a, a viewable angle. So I use this and because I can get this. This jaw is so wide open, I can go ahead and use this to help suck things up to where I want it to be. See? Just like a ant. And I use my little vice grip deal here to hold it in place for me. Comes in handy. See? Just like a soul. So you want to be careful because this can also pop off, so mind that if you want to put like a rag over top of it that'll help it from popping off in front of your face if you're so inclined let's see if we can get this to sneak around here and not have to take off the shock 
Oh, baby, look at that. No problem. And then we have one more of the super, super waste grips to get things bent back into position. Cool. Hot in the garage. Ooh, there we go. Is that enough threads, though? You guys can't see the back side, but I think I got just enough threads on there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. Bingo. Bingo, bingo. Those tabs are just a tad outside of where they need to be. But we're going to get the other bolt in here first and then tap those in a little bit. I just happen to have a punch nearby. <laughs> we can go ahead and remove this now too. It's done its job. All right, a little swift pop for duty doo here. Yeah, it's lined up now. I don't even need the punch. It's been persuaded. Yeah, that should be good. Oh yeah, that's definitely tighter. That was it right there. Launch it, launch it. Give you guys the laying from the ground view. <laughs> Looks good. All bueno, all done. I'm gonna go ahead and run through these bolts real quick. Just check everything out, make sure it's nice and tight. But uh, that's gonna do it, guys coming up and you guys have been paying attention to the Instagram Facebook group up over here yeah we've got uh, some oil pressure issues you saw that in the last video well over 100 psi so let me go ahead and tidy up things on the front of the beam I gotta fix that up still and uh, yeah I'll bring you guys back in a second once I got her back on the ground she is back on the ground guys all buttoned up good to go and it is time to talk about uh, what we're doing next week Next week, next video, who knows when it's going to come out. <laughs> okay, you guys saw in my video, the last one, where we were at like 100 PSI, well and boost, and that's no good. So I picked up this Peterson oil valve regulator. It allows me to adjust that pressure down. I want to get it down to about 60 PSI, and this is pretty cool. <clears throat> I'm going to go right off the oil fill body with this 10 AN right into the body, and then uh, 8 AN, the oil coming in and then a 6 a.m. back to a splitter. The splitter is going to be going right into the case. I got a location on there where this will go right in and I can split the line going back into the case. Type 4 has got an oil fill and that oil fill location on Type 4 is where I have like a return line for my oil system right off of the oil pump and we're going to use this. I'm going to tee it and use that right there. Should be good to go. No problem. That'll be the next video guys. But all right guys that's going to do it for tonight. That's going to do it for this video. Goose and I are exhausted it's hot it's time to go make some dinner and you can see i've sweated this shirt straight through so i'll see you guys in the next video this is jason from jw classic vw don't forget to get out of the garage even if it's 125 degrees get a couple fans out there and do some work lose some weight have a couple beers <laughs> see you next video guys Bye bye